I done had a few jobs, but they wasn't for a long period of time. I never had a problem with uh, going to work. And that's what my ex-wife used to tell my children. You know, she used to tell them, Mama, why daddy just won't come home and get a job? You know, and she used to always tell her where, where he was working. You know, he used to be at work on time and he liked the jobs that he had. I got two grandchildren now. And my daughter have two children. Those are two grandchildren for my daughter. And to have been in prison their whole lives and to start the process all over again with my grandchildren, that's, that's kind of heavy. had been previously charged or convicted. About 80% of them had had jail time. When Growing Home was just an apple in Les Brown's eye, he, he decided that it would be really good to find some land to start doing some training on. His idea was that they had somehow become unrooted from their families and their communities. Um, and he had grown up in the South on a farm and he felt very strongly that agriculture was something that could root you in a place. They say for a person to change, change has to start within that person. And my change started the day that I left prison. Raspberry. You wanna I think Tyra needs an extra guy. Yeah, just after, after each row. No, I know his after each row. You think about this site, which was an old, um, you know, small manufacturing facility 30, 35 years ago. Uh, it stopped operation. The building was torn down, and this site had been vacant for, you know, over 30 years. Um, so now you're able to come in and, you know, reclaim the land and do something that's productive. In terms of this whole green movement and the green economy and green collar jobs and all that stuff, if you don't do it here, you don't do it anywhere. You know, you can't have a sustainable society, a sustainable earth, uh, a sustainable economy if you don't include everybody in that equation. I've lived in the community for 36 years, so I've watched the neighborhood do a complete change. The spot where the urban farm is, is now a food desert. You know, you look at the site and it's an island, uh, um, an island in a place that doesn't have grocery stores. You know, I mean, you can get chips and soda every block or two, but finding a, a any kind of fresh, edible, green plant substance is impossible. Right, right behind that that area used to be a jewel food store. Within an eight-block walking distance, there were three major grocery stores. Now you can't find a fresh tomato. It was kind of a, a community effort to come up with ways to rejuvenate the neighborhood. And one of the strategies that they came up with was using all of the vacant lots in the area to um, spur the economy by creating green collar jobs. I had just gotten laid off from my office job, so I was collecting unemployment. I thought I'd never, you know, never be on the farm. I'm a city girl. We do a lot of spinach. Spinach, I never ate spinach. Lots of greens, cooking greens, Swiss chard. Never, and I can just pick a leaf off and put it in my mouth and eat it. You know, that's, it tastes good. Um, I'm gonna grow a lot of tomatoes, cucumbers this year, vertically. Um, so we'll be harvesting on ladders here. So I never thought I would do nothing like that. So, you know, I saw chickens, I, they chased me around, they was real friendly, you know, everything, you know. Time just flies by. Working, with, uh, Working outside. Yeah. Much better than what I usually do. 
I'm getting a, a true feel of what it's like to get up and go to work every day for a few years straight. And I can never forget what it is to live that so-called street life. We have 20 people currently that are working at least seasonally and part-time that weren't working at all. Some of them were, you know, what people call ex-offenders or people in re-entry mode or whatever you want to say. Um, some people had addiction problems. Some of the folks and young folks had never had any real job experience or anything like that. I didn't start getting into trouble until I was 32 years old. Okay, that was my first case. Okay, it was a drug possession case. I've been to the penitentiary four times. Four. And I, I feel that if I paid my debt to society by being incarcerated, once I get out, it shouldn't be no problem about me finding a job because I'm employable. You know, I even have computer skills. But they, they don't do me no good because when I go fill out an application, it's, it's a place on there where they ask you, have you ever been convicted of a felony? You know, and I can't lie to them people, because if I lie to them, hell, I get the job. I'm gonna lose it anyway. But with this program, I feel that everything's gonna work itself out, right? because there are people that look out for guys like me. They're willing to give me another chance. One of the reasons I don't like the, the phrase rehabilitation is because it suggests that we're doing something to them, um, that we are fixing them in some way, and that's not at all what we can offer people. Agriculture can be transformative. It's been real easy for me to make that transformation this time. Could it have been done years ago? Yeah. Should it have? Yeah. But by not, I just take it as it is now. My life is just what it is now. I went through what I went through for the purpose of being being able to become who I am now. I, I'm not mad at society. Society didn't do this to me. I did this to me. But this program is giving me a, a outlet on how to get back into society and be the person I should have been all the time. I tell you what's really satisfying for me is one of um, the interns this year. Um, I came from the construction trailer and came over a couple of days, a few days ago, and um, she saw me and called me, come see, come see, come see. And they were so happy about uh, having planted the hoop house. You know, that really made me feel good, right? Um, she felt connected in a whole lot of ways to, you know, growing food to the earth. This year, I'm spending a whole lot of time with our new urban farm manager, Lindsay. Then I hope I've been learned enough from her to be able to uh, become the urban farm manager. And like I say, ideally, that is what I really want. You no, know, you're seeing something uh, grow from something you gave some assistance to, instead of seeing something being torn down. I have a son that's 19. I'm hoping that I'm hoping that next year I can get him involved in this. But I want them to bring something like this to the west side because it's only on the south side. You know, we need some west side, north side, east side. We need it. You know, one all over. Einstein has said something like, and I'm paraphrasing. Um, you know, you can't find solutions to problems with problems with the same mindset that created them. Right. So. Um, you know, it's time for a paradigm shift. I used to think that if I did the right thing and won the lottery, that I can get me a chain of car washes, okay? Well, the lottery part didn't come true yet. Okay, I'm not saying it's not gonna happen because I play every day. But this program here, you know, if you venture out and you come up with something concrete, then they'll listen to you. I'm not giving up on trying to get a chain of car washes because, you know, I want to leave something for my grandkids, man. you know, and before my mother dies, I want her to have something. You know, everything she had, you know, 
she earned on her own. I want to say, here, mama, this is you. 